Today, I'm gonna show you how to fly the elevator. During an elevator, the airplane descends fully stalled in a flat attitude while keeping the wings level. Elevators are usually the first maneuver I recommend people to start learning when they wanna get into 3D. Uh, this is because it's a pretty easy maneuver to learn. Uh, you probably can figure out in the first uh, day of training this. Um, and it's a really good way to start getting used to flying the airplane post-stall. Additionally, it's a really good way to um, start transitioning towards Harriers. I think Harriers share a lot of similarities with elevators, so that's a really good starting point. Let's break it down. Let's start in horizontal flight. Point the airplane towards the wind, go to idle, and as the plane slows down, gradually start increasing the elevator to maintain altitude. Eventually the airplane will stall and you'll max out elevator travel. Keep it there. The airplane will start descending and your goal is to keep the wings level and the airplane nose pointing to the original direction. Use generous amounts of rudder and small aileron corrections to achieve this. You can also add a few clicks of throttle to reduce the vertical speed and increase the airflow on the tail. It is likely that you'll need to use more right rudder than left to correct for left turning tendencies of propeller planes at high angles of attack. During the elevator, you can keep the throttle steady and apply max elevator through the whole maneuver. No need to touch elevator or throttle. To exit the elevator, add throttle and gradually decrease elevator until the airplane has enough airflow on the wings and resume normal flying. Once you're comfortable executing elevators and harriers, transitioning from elevator to a harrier is a very simple and common progression. Inverted harriers are pretty much the same, and actually most airplanes are more stable and behave better during inverted flight. If that's the case for you, practice flying normal inverted flight. Do circles, horizontal eights, until you feel pretty comfortable steering the airplane with the rudder during inverted flight. A more advanced progression of elevators are the rolling elevators. This is basically a rolling harrier while the airplane is descending vertically. Um, it's a bit easier than the actual running higher because you don't have to worry about throttle control. A couple other quick notes about elevators. Uh, first of all, the airplane setup is pretty forgiving with uh, elevators and harriers. Um, center of gravity is not that critical, even though some people might think that uh, very rear center of gravity is necessary, it is not. In this case, I'm also not using any mix on this plane. I've seen some people using mixes that will make the elevator and the aileron go in the same direction. So if the elevator goes up, the ailerons also go up. I think that can be helpful to reduce wing rocking on elevators or harriers. I've personally not used them. I don't think they're usually very beneficial for modern aerobatic airplanes. And it's basically one more thing you have to worry about both in setup uh, and if you have it in the suites, it's one more thing that you have to turn on and off when going from maneuver to maneuver. Some of the typical mistakes that some people make when they're learning elevators is overcorrecting with either rudder or especially ailerons. People see the wings rocking a little bit, they try to fix that with a lot of aileron and they end up causing additional oscillations in the airplane. This is also a great maneuver to try in the simulator. It probably will be a bit easier than in real life. The airplane probably will rock a bit less and it will be more stable but it will help you getting the basics down uh, pretty quickly. And that way, once you go to the airfield, you will be able to kind of nail those elevators very soon. Let us know in the comments how things are working out with your elevators. And if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Happy flying.